Sean, just to sort of a week out from round one, how are you placed in terms of who's available and who's not at this stage? Uh, we probably need the next two weeks to really um, see where we're at in terms of guys like Cunnington and Grimer who uh, could be, I think they'll be available in terms of their fitness but whether the match committee decide to, to pick him um, in terms of how many games they've played. Uh, but look, the weekend was a real positive one for us because I know it, it, there's, a, there's been a lot of conjecture around how many injuries we've got, whereas we're not overly concerned with it. I mean, we just think that, um, and I think Brad's been quoted as saying it's been a terrific opportunity for some of the some of the guys to come in and get some exposure. And I think we've been able to find a few players. I mean, on the weekend, you know, Cam Richardson was was terrific. Now he mightn't have got a game if Greenwood and Bastak are available. So. Overall, we feel going in a round one, we're going to have a really good, strong, fit team to put out in the park against West Coast. So Grimer will play at the lower level this week? Grimer's, all we're going to do um, is have a good look at him this week. Is to, we've got the option of playing him for Werribee against North Ballarat. They've got a practice match on the weekend. So uh, that's that's going to be a, a real advantage to, uh, to Nathan as to Benny Cunnington and maybe there might be one or two other guys that we uh, will apply to the AFL to see if we can get permission to play them. In regards to Matt Jack Doer, is there a chance that he could be elevated off the rookie list for round one? Um, the good thing about Matt Jack is he's been able to show he can play at the level, but there's still a lot of work to go. Uh, whether we choose to promote Matt Jack or the other two guys who have, who have been really good in the preseason has been Luke Delaney, who's filled in down back. And, and again, because Nathan Grimer hasn't been around, you know, Luke's been given an opportunity and he's a, he's a third year player on our list. And the other guy's Cam Pedersen, who we, um, who we rookie listed, you know, for that very reason to give us some real good depth in the key positions and Cam can ruck as well. So I think it's probably a, um, a three-way street at the minute in terms of if we are going to promote someone, we've got that opportunity to do that now with Aidan Kennedy's long-term injury, um, whether we'll go down our path. And have you followed your final rookie spot? Yeah, yeah no, no, we didn't have uh, no, we didn't have that scenario. Have you got a better idea of Hamish's possible availability now? Probably not. Um, but the thing is that we do know it's um, it's real positive in terms of um, how he's pulled up from the surgery. Like he's just got out of his moon boot today. And, you know, in just speaking to Amy, she just said, look, it feels exactly like the other one felt. And the other one, you know, was probably only about a month uh, rehab period. But then again, the big thing with Hamish is going to be his match conditioning. So, and that's where we don't want to compromise any of the voice preparations. So, and it changes from case to case. So, yeah, he, look, we know he's going to be out at least for the next three or four weeks um, because that, that'll be the healing process. But in terms of his conditioning, we don't want to put a figure on that. Did you have a better idea than Matty about how many weeks he might be out for? No, nah, same sort of thing. I mean, Matty only got injured on, uh, you know, on Saturday, had the scans on Sundays. Uh, the boys are in at A. This is the first time they've had an opportunity to have a look at Matty. So um, again, it'll be just one of those ones where the, you know, traditionally hamstrings, you know, are three to four week injuries. So, you know, we'd hope that it, that'd be the case. But again, we don't want to put an actually exact figure on it. Do you have to do it? No, I just think we've been stiff. I mean, if you have a look at it, we've, um, we've probably had five or six injuries that have been carryovers from the previous year, and, and none of them are... The only soft tissue ones we have had have been, like, you know, you've got, you've got Matty Campbell's injury from the weekend, and, uh, and I think that um, if you had been at the game, you know, Easton Wood is a very, very quick player, and Matty's extremely quick, and uh, I think it was more along the lines as, you know, that... You know, there might have been a little bit of fatigue in there. He'd been on the ground for a while, you know. Uh, I think there's probably bigger issues at play in terms of some of Brad's comments around the, the, the sub rule. You know, uh, we were pretty exposed on the weekend with some of the injuries that we had. So, uh, but in terms of a review, no, we've got a, a fantastic medical and conditioning team. And from the positive side of it, I mean, we kicked 18 goals against the potential top four side and we kicked nine in the last quarter and we didn't have anyone on the bench to, to, to rotate. So I think from that side of thing, you know, we're in, um, we're in really good nick. Can you see... No, well, there's no... There's, there's no uh, there was one easy decision to make. I mean, Con Tropolis has been our doctor for a hell of a long time and an excellent doctor. Con resigned, and so he gave us plenty of notice that he wouldn't be coming on board 
um, for this season. And Steve Saunders, who's our head conditioner, when I talk about conditioning, but he's our head of, head, of, head of medical and player pathways. I mean, Steve's someone we've been trying to get over here for a couple of years, and it's a huge coup for our football club. So, you know, with the, the trip over to Utah and um, that this pre-season under Steve's belt and, and, and the next two pre-seasons with the, the age of our group and where they're at, we think that um, we're going to get some huge advantages having him on board. So uh, we're really wrapped in the position we are from that side of things. Did, did, did Ben Cunningham pull up well enough to give him more game time? Yeah, Benny pulled up really well from um, from his hit out on Friday night. So uh, you know we want to extend his game time this week. So yeah, really wrapped in his progress. Yeah, very much so. He'll be right in contention. He'll be right amongst the mixed. And uh, the boys have uh, taken a real softly, softly approach with Benny. We've put an enormous amount of conditioning work into him. So from that side of it, he's right. It'll just be a matter for Brad to say whether his touch is going to be up to scratch or not. From what you saw on the weekend, can you see this sub rule becoming a, a big issue throughout the year? Yeah, I think it's going to be an issue. And, I, and look, whenever you introduce anything new, you know, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be subject to, to close scrutiny, you know, from the clubs and from the media. Uh, the, the, the AFL has chosen to go down a path of um, um, the three interchange players and the sub. And look, we can only talk from our own experiences. The weekend was the first time we just thought, right, we're only going to have three interchange players and use them. We did add three subs. But um, that was probably more from, a, uh, from just having a look at some of the players. But we just went with the three interchange players, and um, by three quarter time, we didn't have a fit interchange guy on the bench. So, so I think that you know down the track, it's going to be one for the AFL to closely monitor. And there's already been comment from around the traps from different club AFL club personnel. So, yeah, I think it's just one of those ones. You know, on the weekend, we had a scenario where we had a fair few injuries. Um, Maybe next time we play, we won't have that situation. So I think it needs to be given a really good, you know, seven, eight week period just to see how it goes right across the board before we can be, you know, too critical of it all. One of the main reasons they brought it in was to reduce the number of games that are affected by clubs having injuries. Yeah. But could, that, could it actually have the opposite effect? Well, on the weekend, it had the potential to have an influence on the result from our end. You know, and that's why we were really wrapped that we could kick nine goals in the last quarter, but we, we understand it was only a practice match. So we don't know how hard the doggies were going on the weekend. Whereas um, uh, if it was in the real season proper and that same scenario happened, you know, the, the fact that if someone got injured earlier, you know, everyone's talking about maybe the sub might be interesting from a tactical point of view. But you know, if you lose someone in the first you know, five minutes with a hamstring, well, you're going to have to activate your sub. So then all of a sudden you're just down to three. So there's no advantage. The scenario you're talking about is if you get four big injuries on the game. I mean, in the last year's scenario, that was the same. If you got four, you had no bench. Yeah, anyway. that's right. That's right. So whether we've come any further or not is is a big question, you know. And, and I think the number one thing we've always got to be mindful of is 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 the players, you know, and and yeah, you know, their longevity and and looking after them. You know, it's a it's a long season as it is. So um, the speed of the game's only increasing. You know, so. Uh, you know, there's, there's probably that, um, that that thing that we need to look at to say, you know, are four interchange players enough? Again, that'll be something for the rule makers to decide. We'll just deal with what we've got on our plate at the minute. If um, Matty Campbell is to miss the first, you know, few weeks of the season, how big a loss will that be in the type of player he is for the Oh, look, it's it's disappointing for Matty. You know, he's had a fantastic pre-season and his fitness probably hadn't been where, it, where he'd wanted to be over the last couple of years, so through injury. So, um, you know, he's the good thing from Matty's perspective that he'll come back fit and strong and ready to go because he's had a, a great pre-season. So at least he's got that base. So um, from the club's perspective, you know, it's 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 tough, but it also creates other opportunities. So yeah, we're we're, we're confident that we'll be able to cover him. Thank you. No worries. Thanks,